Luke chapter 10 tells us of a lawyer who confronts the Lord Jesus. He asks him an important question. Oh, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Speaking about eternal things. And yet he was seeking to tempt the Saviour. He was trying to trap the Saviour so that the, the religious leaders could find fault with Christ. The Saviour turned the question on him and he said, What is written in the law? How readest thou? For the Saviour knew he knew the law. And immediately this young man replies, quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6 and Leviticus chapter 19. Man's relationship with God, man's relationship with his neighbour. And then the Lord Jesus said, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. The Lord Jesus turns the spotlight back on him again. You see, was the Lord Jesus saying that salvation is by works? No, not at all. But in the answer, yes, what he said was right, but there is an insurmountable problem in doing it. You see, man is a sinner. Galatians chapter 3 says, Word for the law is our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. It shows us our sin. It reveals our lostness and our inability to fulfill the law of God as God demands with perfect obedience. Romans chapter 3, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And here was a young man that knew the law, but his heart was not right with God. He's uncomfortable. And so he therefore seeks to deflect this from himself and so he says who is uh, our neighbor he, you know he's happy to talk about man's relationship with his neighbor but he doesn't want to talk about his relationship with god and so the lord jesus tells him the story of the good samaritan about a man who is going down from jerusalem to jericho the pathway and friend you know the sinner is on a downward pathway through the wilderness of his sin but it will lead downward to hell it was a dangerous pathway because it was notorious for robberies and for murders. And this young man falls amongst thieves and they strip him of everything and then they beat him and they leave him to die along the wilderness road. Of course, the devil's a hard taskmaster. He wants you to, strip, to be stripped of everything decent. He wants you to die in your sin and to be lost in hell forever. We notice the passers-by. There was the priest. He was returning from his religious duties in the temple but he's busy going home now. He's totally unconcerned. Just passes by on the other side. And then we have the Levite. He looks. Yes, he has a little more sympathy. But he comes to the conclusion, there's nothing I can do for him. So he goes on home too. Friend, it is true. There is nothing that religious exercises can do for you. Because religion of itself can't save you. Good works cannot save you or change your soul. You need the cleansing of the precious blood of Jesus. And that brings us to the good Samaritan. The Samaritan, he was journeying. And the Bible says he came where he was. Notice his condescension. The Lord Jesus Christ, he came from heaven's glory to where we are, into the sin cursing of time, to be our saviour. And then notice his compassion, because it said he saw him and had compassion upon him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You see, God looked upon sinful man. He needed a saviour. God provided a saviour. And God looks in your heart. And the saviour looks in compassion, desiring the salvation of your soul. And then notice his care. The Bible says he went to him. Thank God he didn't walk away from him. He went to him. And through this little message, the Lord is coming. And by his Holy Spirit, he's speaking to you. And he wants to bind up your wounds. Yes, he bound up the wounds, pouring in the oil and the wine. The oil which was soothing for the wound. And the wine was to sterilize and cleanse the wound. And thank God the Lord Jesus Christ wants to heal your broken, sinful heart. Cleanse you from your sin in his precious blood. And then he set him on his own beast. He put him in his own place. And thank God when he saves us, we are brought into Christ, now in Christ Jesus. What a place and position. And then he brought him to an inn and took care of him. That's the gracious care of God. And how when he saves us, then he looks after us and he cares for his redeemed people. And the Spirit of God abides in us and with us. And then he said on the morrow, he took two pence 
And he gave it to the host and said, take care of him. See, the Lord Jesus Christ, what happens whenever we're saved? We're put into the family of God. And among the children of God, we have fellowship with God's people and we grow in grace and in the knowledge and we encourage one another. And then he says, when I come again. In other words, he's not stopping this care right to the end. And then he comes again. And glory to God, Jesus Christ is coming again. And we're going out to meet him. Tell me, do you know the Savior? Is he yours? I beg you in God's name, come to him today and receive him. Heavenly Father, bless your word to our hearts. For Jesus' sake, amen. For my heart to yours, home to yours. God bless you.